Concord may be the biggest video game fumble in video game history. Remove all bigots from gaming. Alan Wake 2 community manager melts down over Concord epic failure. And GTA 6 getting delayed to 2026? Welcome back to Fan TV, where we dissect the latest gaming disasters in this woke gaming industry and everything nerd culture. I am your host Ergo, and without further ado, and then, if you're not super involved in the gaming world, you might not have heard about the unmitigated catastrophe that is Concord. And the game actually launched on August 23rd, but like pretty much every side project I ever announced, they then promptly unlaunched it, with Sony announcing that the game will be taken completely offline this Friday, September 6th, and explaining. While many qualities of the experience resonated with players, we also recognize that other aspects of the game in our initial launch didn't land the way we'd intended. Also, to explain, when they say that it didn't land the way they intended, they mean that the game sold just 25 5,000 copies across both platforms. And Steam charts show that the game peaked at just under 700 concurrent players just after launch. <laughs> I'm with Sony on this one. It absolutely makes no sense how a company can invest over a hundred million dollars into a product, spend six to eight years of development time, and then at the end of the day reap a peak player count of six to seven hundred and a 25,000 number of copies sold. I'm shutting that game down and I'm simply going to to hold my L. And hopefully the lesson I will learn at the end of the day is not double down on live service games and maybe one will actually pop off, but it will be stick to what you're good at, make quality single player games, focus on entertainment, and stay the hell away from wokeness. But do you guys actually think that Concord could have pulled off a No Man's Sky or a Cyberpunk 2077 resurrection? I'd like to hear from you guys in the comments. This right here blew my mind. This is my first time fighting Quiet in Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. So she starts sniping at me from way over there. I'm thinking I'm gonna pop smokes and I'm gonna run through this, you know? And so I pop one successfully, pop another one, and now she's getting wise to it. Watch when I try to pop this third one. Chuck it! Did you see it? Chuck it! You know, after seeing this, I am convinced that the PS4 era was peak era of video game awesomeness. And after the PS4 era was through, the next era was the era of diminishing returns. We have games coming out boasting PS3 level graphics, even though they're supposed to be next gen. We have broken AIs, see Star Wars Outlaws. We have DEI at every twist, turn, nook and cranny. And it's so disappointing. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. Concord's immediate death has caused so many meltdowns within the gaming industry over the past couple of days from developers to community managers to activists in the mainstream media. And now, of course, the Alan Wake 2 senior community manager is calling for bigots to be removed from gaming communities for praising the fact that Sony shut this title down. In a subsequent post, she added, getting bigots out of your communities is a band-aid and not a permanent solution. Modeling desired behaviors and championing the kinds of community members you want to be the majority in your community takes effort and time. Start early, practice often, small steps are steps too. You know what really grinds my gears about these people? Back in the early 2000s, there wasn't any political agendas and all that stuff. We simply had developers that were passionate about gaming and passionate about masculinity. But then those guys went away and activists tried to fill those shoes. And what did the activists do? They prioritized activism and political agendas. They forgot about storytelling. They forgot about entertainment. And then now that the industry or the market is pushing back against that, anyone who disagrees with them is now a bigot. That's why I can't stand these people. You created these circumstances. No one cares about politics. When it comes to entertainment, entertainment is sacred, guys. Entertainment is the place we go to escape. Life is hard, man. We don't need to see the same BS that we're dealing with in everyday life and seeing it in, in movies and games. Why do we need to see those things there? That's what these people don't understand. They think that entertainment is a place where you go not to entertain, but where you go to actually propagate your political agendas and stances. Because that's what matters to you. They're in the wrong industry. I can see what they're doing, what he's doing. I can see it, I feel it. He's cooking. Oh no. Oh no. No, no. This is how to win in an argument. I disagree with you. 
I disagree with you more. Okay, you win. She doesn't know I know this, but this is just the beginning of the end. Now, I'm gonna close off completely, emotionally and physically. I'm gonna go into my room, I'm gonna play video games for hours and hours, and I'm not gonna talk to her. She's gonna wanna go on a date or hang out later, but that's not gonna happen. Then maybe the next day I will talk to her and things will be normal. But this disagreement led us to a whole day of suffering. Well, there you have it. That's how to win in an argument. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. I thought I won that one. <laughs> no, you didn't. And now you won the argument badge. I love the game. I love the hustle, man. Finally have some evidence. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? No, no. The symbiote scenes in Spider-Man 2 were good, but we could have seen better. All right, this is the original scene. I'm calling the hospital. I said I'd find him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I've got this under control. Ooh, big man. But this version is so much better. Hurry up and spill it. I have places to be. Where is Miles? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? We don't know and we don't care. All he's been doing is getting our way. That's so... God damn, I'm calling the police. But we'll find him. I'm calling them right now. What are you, deaf? Child endangerment's a nasty case. You not only allowed him to endanger himself, but you encouraged it. Go ahead and call the cops, so they can know he's Spider-Man. Prison time will be knocking on your door. <laughs> or you have another option. Shut the fuck up and let us find him. <laughs> He called. Yeah, there's no way we could have gotten a moment like that in the, in today's modern gaming industry. There's simply no way. If it was the early 2000s, I would say we, there's a high chance you could have gotten that level of dialogue. Because the early 2000s, guys, the developers, they didn't care, man. They would push the envelope, guys. It would definitely make for one of the best gaming moments. Or maybe, if not the best, the most controversial gaming moments in history. And I think Insomnia games would be better for it. So, um, this was really, really funny for me to see this. So there's been a campaign going on for quite a while to get content creators who have been critical of the new Star Wars completely demonetized. An alarming number of users are exploiting their platforms to spread hate. There has been a rampage of vitriol that we have faced since the show and this was is from 2024 announced. this is what the acolyte exists for it's not here for story it's not here to build the lore for crying out loud look at the cast right here having as little white males as possible in this cast so they made a video to demonetize they they sent this to uh, to youtube they said hello dear youtube the star wars community would at the very least appreciate a formal response or update in regards to our well documented and pressing concerns about YouTubers pushing prolonged harassment on your platform. And so basically they edited together this whole thing with an interview with a guy from 2016 to paint the people that are criticizing the new Star Wars show as being racist and terrible people. And YouTube has reached out and they have responded publicly. Thanks for reaching out. Just heard back and confirmed that this content is not violative and it will remain up. We totally understand that you might not agree with this decision, but we reviewed this video very carefully against our policies. That's what I'm talking about! These days, it is impossible to have an opinion without your livelihood being threatened. But I must give it up to YouTube. YouTube earned themselves a huge W here, man. That's a w. And for the fans that are petitioning for the Acolyte to make a return, my question is, where were you guys when the show was actually premiering? The Acolyte is clearly a show that was made for the modern audience, so then why didn't the modern audience turn up to watch it? That's what I don't understand. Now, this is the nerd side of me talking. Rather than petitioning for a show that nobody wants to watch, 
I would petition for the biggest gaming atrocity that ever happened to fans, and that is being robbed of Sleeping Dogs 2. That's something much, much worthy of a petition than a ridiculous acolyte show that no one even watches. Come on. It's facts! It's facts! It's in our facts. These facts is in our facts. I hate to be the one to tell you, but we got some bad news about GTA 6. Oh, you mean the fact that PlayStation secured exclusive marketing rights? No, uh, GTA 6 is apparently being delayed until 2026, maybe even middle of 2026. Wait, no, that would mean that we can't sell our PS5 Pro. What are we gonna do? No one's gonna buy the console now. Wait, no, uh, I, don't, I don't see anything from Rockstar. Yeah, bro, Rockstar hasn't announced anything official about GTA 6 since they launched the first trailer over nine months ago. This is according to one of the biggest GTA insiders. He says he got the information from multiple devs across two different studios. Okay, okay, let's say this is true. What does this mean for us on PC? Are we all just gonna get the game at the same time or? Nah, man, it's 12 to 18 months after console gets theirs, regardless of when they get it. So you're telling me if console has to wait until middle of 2026, we might have to wait until 2028? Unfortunately, yes. Um, what about us? When are we gonna get it? Someone please tell him. I'm not gonna lie, this did dampen my hype levels for GTA 6, if not kill them, because I don't necessarily see why the hell we have to wait 13 years for a game to actually come out. It gets to a point where it starts being ridiculous. Let's be honest with ourselves here. I can understand the philosophy of it'll be out when it's ready. We want to deliver the best experience for you guys, so please give us a year, give us six months, give us four months, fine. But 13 years, guy. And the one time you make a promise, you give us a release date, 2025. Okay, sweet. And then now it's going to be delayed to 2026. It's like, nigga. Guys, I remember when we used to eat good. Back in the early 2000s, Rocksteady was taking out games like that. Ro they, they, they had their Golden Goose GTA. Every single release was a hit. They had Bully. They had Midnight Club. They had so many titles. And then now, we, ha we, we, we get like probably one or two games in a generation. It's insane, man. It's crazy. 